So I'm gonna give you the tour through the eyes of the student, right? So I'm the student and I get into this course. The first thing I see is something jumping right out at me saying, start here. This is how you begin this journey. And then very clearly it's outlined to me, this is what you need to do. Here's what you're gonna read. Here's, here's how you're gonna be graded. This is what you can expect from your instructor. And this is what is expected of you in order to do well in this course. So that's number one. I need, I need it to be clearly outlined for me. I need a nice schedule. I need a course schedule so that I can plan my time because we do know adult learners have no time. I, I know this. So, so the time piece is important. They need to be able to plan their schedule and know when do I have to do certain things. Due dates are important and knowing, you know, is that flexible? Do I have to meet that date? Do I have any kind of wiggle room here? So uh, having clear outlines. When you start out, keep it, keep it very simple. You don't need to new, use every technology tool that's out there because that's only going to make the students more confused. And again, set the expectations. Let them know what you expect and let them know again, how often are you going to be online? Uh, how often do they have to wait to get a response from you? So when we, we're looking at the question here of expectations, clear expectations and setting those from the outset. And I think that those are uh, a lot more important for an online, uh, an online course. Um, here too, in the much more traditional face-to-face, -face, I can adjust, I get a lot of uh, feedback from my own students moment to moment. Did they get it, did they not? Depending on the tools the course uses, you might, have, you might not have that in an online environment. Um, and it's sometimes tougher to modulate one's tone too. So uh, a, a stating ex expectations very clearly from my perspective might come across to the students as you know, being kind of harsh or a little bit bossy at the beginning of the class. So I'm really gonna have to go back and, and edit and make sure that I'm, I'm clear without um, coming across as, as really threatening. And we do know from research on communication and computer mediated environments that for some reason, when we read um, text on a computer, it tends to come across more negatively. We've all seen that in the, you know, sending a, a statement to a colleague in, in a, say, a work email that comes across as kind of nasty when that's not what we intended at all. So those are the sorts of things that we should be thinking about as we start to say, how do I shape on day one clarity about what I expect? And it's also doubly important because we are still all figuring out what does an online course even entail? What does it look like? Uh, if it's not going and sitting in a prescribed seat at a prescribed time and reading a prescribed book, then, then what are we doing? Uh, instructors are working that out as we go along and students are willing. They're willing to adapt to a very wide variety of learning environments and activities, but we gotta tell them upfront what those are. Keep all the um, course information within the course. Don't send me assignments through my SUNY Rockland email. Don't even send them as attachments in course mail. I want them in the Dropbox that I created for them so they can be attached to the gradebook so that they're able to um, monitor their progress. I do have an introductory video that basically gives them a little tour of the course, tells them about what's in it. That's incorporated into a an introduction page which has my, my face um, and I guess the, the video is the one place I actually show up in a video. Usually my videos don't have my face appearing so I try to at least there welcome them to the class and so on. I email them uh, a lot right at the beginning, uh, try to give them some of the overview, what's expected in the preview week and you know what they need to do to get ready for the course. Because I use so many different pieces of technology require them to submit their homework assignments as a single PDF. They have to learn how to do some of that. So I try to help them um, develop those skills in the first week with some really easy assignments. In order for faculty members to get to know the students better, um, I think it is important to have an icebreaker discussion um, that's maybe not technically related to the course content so that they can get an idea of what their students like outside of class. So developing a sense of trust and connection between students, a, a, a community of, uh, of learners, is uh, a very conscious effort in an online classroom. In some classrooms, it can be organic. In a face-to-face -face classroom, it can be organic. The students can be friends. Uh, they could recognize each other. And uh, in an online classroom, there needs to be discussion forums. 
uh, that are aimed directly at bringing the students together. Um, I like to bring them together with, uh, at, at the beginning of a class and have them gather around what their initial thoughts are about uh, my discipline, French. So uh, my uh, initial discussions are usually uh, ones, uh, one called meet, meet Your Classmates, where uh, it's very simple self-introduction, and I ask them to talk a little bit about their hobbies and their interests. And uh, then I have another discussion about what are your first impressions are of the French, and hold nothing back, because um, that usually gets them uh, thinking about the French and uh, the, uh, you know, impor one important part of, of this stage of the, uh, of the course is my participation in the discussion. I uh, assume a very neutral stance and a very uh, sort of, I try to be a gracious host and accommodate all my students um, at, the, at the very beginning of, uh, of the course. I also, um, I usually check into my course two, three times a day during the first two or three weeks because, so that students know that I'll be attentive to their concerns. And that usually helps establish um, some trust. We have a, um, people call it different things, orientation week, icebreaker week, where the students are um, given access to the course before the semester, semester actually starts. And one of the things that I talk about in training is, you know, what is the purpose of that week. Um, we have a policy, there's nothing graded during that week. Students do activities that are ungraded so that they can learn the features of the course, how to take a quiz, how to submit an attachment, and so on, how to participate in a discussion when there's no high stakes, there's no grade involved. And so that's one purpose of that icebreaker week. And the other one is what the name icebreaker implies, is to start to form some community among the students. The other purpose for that week is so if a student gets in there and says, this is not for me, they can drop without penalty and you know, take an on-campus class or whatever they want to do. So we have kept that orientation week um, sacrosanct, as they say, Let's use a big word, um, uh, since we started. It was the way we were trained when we started with SLN, and we just said that all makes a lot of good sense. So what's open in that week is just that first forum and, um, and, the, and the course information documents, which we obviously require. It's part of our master template. It's basically the syllabus, which is required for every course. Um, we break those up into um, uh, pages, separate pages, so that it's not one long document. Because some people's syllabi are, you know, <laughs> twenty pages long. Um, scrolling through that is not the same as looking at it on paper. So we um, have. It's not really a policy, but it's the way we train them from the start: is to break that up into um, sections. And we have some things that are required and some things that are their personal you know, choice of how they present it. And um, it's there for the whole course. It's what students refer back to for, you know, how am I going to be graded on that? And what's the overall grade? How is that figured? I keep the two modules, module one and module two, open at the same time. Because if a student does take advantage of that one week head start, then I don't want them to be bored. So I do open module two, but I keep one open for the latecomers. I also make that first module very light because I realize that students are not all going to be there on day one, that there's going to be people coming and going. We have the one week ad drop period. So I try to make it very, um, very, very light and ease them into the course. Um, and I have them do assignments, which I used to make them practice and not count them, and now I do count them. And these assignments are representative of what they will have to do in the course. Um, one of the written assignments, they have to submit it using the message box. Another one of the written assignments, they have to use an attachment. 
and this is what they're going to be doing when, when they actually get into the course. I also have them take a quiz um, on the course syllabus, again, to make sure they know how to take a quiz. So if they do all of those uh, things in Module 1, then they should be feeling pretty uh, prepared for the next module. After they've done all of those things, I usually send them a welcome course mail. I'll make some comments about whatever they wrote in their assignments just to touch base with them. Because I realize that many times distance learners do feel isolated and they don't have any connection or feel any connection and they're wondering, you know, they're writing to this faceless person. Um, so I try to always keep in mind the human element that there is somebody on the other side of that email. So the first thing they see is um, they see a pop-up that has a welcome message for, to them. And that pop-up gives them immediate directions on the first things I want them to do. And that very first thing that I want them to do, the action that I want them to take, is to actually send me a course mail message. And there's a reason for that. And I talk to my faculty all the time that if everything else fails, as long as they can communicate with me and they know how to communicate with me, I can fix everything else. Communication is the most important thing whether in, in all the aspects of the things that we do, especially with teaching and learning. With an online class and a student taking their class work at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, whenever it is that it's available to them, as long as they know how to ask a question and where to ask the question of, everything else can be solved. All other problems can be taken care of as long as they can get to me and I can then respond to them. So I ask them to communicate with me immediately. That's the very first thing I ask my students to do. And I give them credit for doing it because they've now navigated the system successfully. I think that's an important part of learning. Can you navigate the system successfully? And I give them credit for doing that and then I turn around and, assure, and, uh, and, and respond to that and let them know that not only did I receive it, but I also say I'm here to help in that response. Now, now that you've gotten in touch with me and I, and I, and I ask them to tell me reasons why they're taking this class online, you know, what, is the, what, is their, what are their goals, those kinds of things, I ask them that in, there, in that email. Then I turn around and then reply to them with, you know, not only am I, you know, I, I find some other way to in, embellish that and add, add to that and encourage them, but then I also tell them I'm here for, their, for, for them. Music